Okay, I've got some more good news for the guys working on the uh, cement batteries or the crystal batteries. Um, these things aren't dying. And uh, some of the ones that have failed that I built wrong, the little tiny uh, lid uh, batteries didn't work out for me. I just There's just not enough concrete in them. But these ones here, or the larger ones, are holding a voltage. The amperage isn't much there, but the voltage is still there. And so I went a direction of saying, okay, well, so it won't run your car. What will it run? And that's kind of where I decided to go with this. And as long as we got something that's there all the time, let's use it. And John Bedini said it's going to have to run something uh, very low power requirements. That little LCD clock worked out, and that's been running, and I expect that to run a long time. But I found another circuit that runs way down in the microamp range. And it came out of overunity.com on a Jewel Thief thread, I believe, and Cooler posted it. It's a Hartley oscillator. It's nothing special, but that's the circuit right there. And when I saw this right here, it uses 100 microamps on about 1 to 1.5 one volts. I was all over this thing, and it's extremely simple. Um, the coil I had trouble with. It's made up on a straw, a drinking straw, 30 gauge of wire wrapped this way, uh, 50 turns, and then wrapped the opposite direction, 25 turns. And the first time I did it, it didn't wrap it the uh, opposite way, and it wouldn't work. There's another variation of the circuit there using a speaker, but this is the one I really liked right here. The reason is it transmits. This is a radio transmitter that operates way down in the microamp range and works off of the cement battery. Now there's my multimeter right there. You can see it's at zero. I have this set on the lowest microamp reading way down at the far end. I've also got a radio here that you're going to be able to hear this and this is transmitting from this little wire here across to here. Now this was originally designed as a biological medical circuit for implants and uh, it was modified uh, here and there and whatever but I believe that was the first time they had a simple transmitter circuit like this. Now I had to go ahead and modify it some more. Here's my little straw coil and I'm using a ferrite inductor to help me here with the tuning and then I also put a capacitor, a little capacitor right here to help out a little bit too. It's not very big. I think it's 47 microfarad, but it does help. Let me plug this in. You're going to hear this go off now. The oscillator is running. There's my reading. 3.3 .3 microamps. Not milliamps, microamps. And I got that by using this ferrite core on that uh, uh, center tap coil. This is a Hartley oscillator. That's what that's called, a Hartley oscillator. And uh, this is how I can vary the um, frequency. Watch the amp change, too. And this is running off of that chunk of concrete. And that uh, right there, uh, that particular one is just the quickcrete. That's got nothing in it but hardware store quickcrete. Yeah, it's a mortar mix, and it's just in an aluminum can. The aluminum can was sanded down about this far. And that's a copper wire doubled over and just stuck to the bottom of the can with tape. And uh, there is a Hartley oscillator, very efficient one running way down about three microamps and transmitting across space here. This is not connected to the radio, this is transmitting. And like I say, this was originally designed as a medical device, but uh, boy does it work good on this. So anyway, I just wanted to let, share that with people that you can find stuff for these little batteries to work, but you've got to dig for it. They have to work a circuit that works on microamps. And uh, then they just keep on going. I don't know how long this would run. A long, long, long time. All right. Thanks for watching.